Um, on Monday, we were at an outdoor market in Barnsley as it was reopening. Attention, of course, now turning to other shops in England, which will be able to open up again in just over a week. Let's go to Ben now, who's at a shopping centre in Watford. Morning to you, Ben. How's things? Yeah, morning to you both. Welcome to Watford. And we're looking at what could look and feel very different when shops in England start to open from next week. For a start, you're going to have to queue just to get into the shopping centre. And then once you're inside, all of those usual things that we're getting increasingly used to now. So suggestions of wearing a face mask, keeping your distance and, of course, keeping your hands clean, hand sanitising. Well, Vicky's with me this morning. Vicky's one uh, of the people responsible for this mall. Vicky, hello. The first thing I'm noticing, lots of arrows on the floor. Talk me through what these are for. Yes, absolutely. It's to ensure that we um, maintain social distancing as much as possible in what is normally a crowded place. Mm. And it's going to be a very new, different experience for people. So keep to the left, follow our route and keep your social distancing. So there's a one way system in place for people walking around and there's grey arrows here outside individual shops. What are they for? Well, our retailers and our stores, they're working really hard themselves to be ready. But we appreciate that they might not have enough room inside to queue. So we're helping them provide some queuing space outside their stores where necessary. And that's one of the differences, isn't it, between a mall like this, a shopping centre, and maybe the high street, because you're responsible for this public space, whereas on a high street, it's hard to know who will keep a check on those queues, make sure they're not in front of someone else's shop, they're not getting too long. How do you manage that? Yeah, we'll be controlling numbers very carefully coming into the centre and into the car parks. We'll be limiting the amount of people into the centre. And working in Watford, and I do know that the local authority doing all they can to put floor vinyls down actually in the town centre and working with local businesses as well. So to try and keep a check on who's queuing and where yes. because people might be asked to walk away and then come back when the queue's a bit shorter. They may well now, be. I notice as well here not all your shops are going to open. No. A lot have been closed. Some open during lockdown if they're essential selling food Correct. and things like that. But the experience of shopping will be really different, it won't will. it? It will be. And we know from doing research, uh, we've done research with over 2,000 people, that actually you know, people are really keen to get back out into the shops again, but naturally feeling anxious. So safety is our number one priority, um, as it always is, but in a very different way now. But we also know that our, um, our visitors are going to be very functional in their shopping mm. and they, they know what they want and uh, it, it won't be the same as perhaps before where you come in and you'd grab something to eat and dwell. It's very functional, get in and, and move on. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because look, as a shopping centre firm, you know, traditionally you would want people to stick around. They'd, you know, you'd want them to buy a coffee, maybe have a meal, maybe go to the cinema. Your food court's closed. Yes. Some food will be sold just for takeaway, of course, not opening the cinema. It's going to be a really different experience, isn't it? It is, and we look forward to those times where we can have the leisure element coming back in later in the year, we hope. But it is a very different experience. But, you know, we're excited to be opening shops again. We're excited to be welcoming our retailers back again. Mm. We've got some fantastic retailers. We've got 14 shopping centres across the UK, and we're all really keen to get our plans in place and, and, and welcome people back. But we want people to feel safe. And there's a lot of work to do. You've got about a week to do it yeah. already, all of this sort of stuff. And you were saying earlier, a lot of the retailers have got all their Mother's Day stuff in, in stores. They've got all their March stock. So, yes. you know, all these things that we as customers probably don't think about, no. a load of logistics going on behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. We've, we're starting to see our retailers come back and set up behind the scenes. Some have been in pr previously, some are still to do it. So um, as time goes on, and we'll have more and more stores open. And, and if you want to know about which stores are open, do go onto our websites because we'll keep those up to date as will our retailers themselves, but in two websites will be completely kept up to date for everyone to know what's open now. Good luck. A thank lot of work very, still very to much. do. I know you've done a lot already. Thank Vicky, you. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to see you. Right, so there you have it. That's the current state of play in places like this. They've got just over a week to make sure that all of those systems are in place to keep shoppers safe. But as I said at the beginning, the experience of coming somewhere like this is going to look and feel very different for now, uh, but quite a crucial stage in getting some of those non-essential retailers back up and running. Uh, more for me a little later. It's going to be so different, isn't it? Um, ben, it's been really interesting seeing how the um, shopping malls are trying to... It's time now. Uh, Monday, we were at an outdoor market in Barnsley as it reopened. Attention now is turning to other shops in England which will be able to open up again in just over a week. So Ben is at a shopping centre in Watford, which are obviously very quiet right now, Ben, but they're busy trying to come up with ways of making shopping possible. 
Yeah, you're right. It's a little bit creepy actually being in here with everything uh, so closed. And you might notice that in some of the shops, they've still got winter things. Uh, they're advertising Easter just around the corner. So the big logistical challenge for all of these firms now is trying to make sure that they've got the right stuff in the shops when they reopen. But crucially as well, how they can reopen safely. So let's talk about it. Diane Wells with me. She's retail director at Springwell. Diane, morning. Morning. Look, it's a huge logistical challenge, this, isn't it? Because yeah. they've been shut. 10 weeks yep. and now potentially in England they will reopen yep. next Monday. Yep. Big job. Huge job. I mean, there's, there's two parts of the job, particularly in somewhere like this. We have the centre that has to organise um, social distancing and making sure customers and staff of the stores are safe. Mm. And then the stores have to organise the stores themselves. So this is a big job. And it's not just about putting stickers on the floor. There, there are stickers on the floor. It's once the, the centre reopens, making sure that all the customers adhere to what these requirements are. So it's quite a, a, a full on job making sure this works. Is it going to be easier to do that in somewhere like this? Because they can manage the queues, can't they? Because, you know, if there's a limit on how many people can go in a store, people will be queuing outside. Much harder to do that on a high street, I guess, because who polices that? That's absolutely right. Um, it is much easier within a confined, controlled environment like a shopping centre or even a retail park. You can control the number of people who enter, enter those spaces, and then once they're there, you can move them around more easily because it's a managed space. So you have staff, security staff, ambassadors, those people who can control crowds. In a high street, it's much more flexible, much more dynamic, much more free-flowing. There isn't an overarching ownership. There are lots of business improvement districts, and these are the companies that manage the space but they don't have any statutory rights. So they have ambassadors to help people move around, but making sure that happens is, is quite challenging. Um, and it's gonna be a really different experience shopping, isn't it? It's not gonna be a day out. It's not gonna be particularly fun. It's gonna be quite functional. What should people expect when they come to somewhere like this in terms of what they will be able to do and what they can't do? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very different from the way it was, but I think we're starting from a new base. We're starting from a place where we're not shopping at all and people are desperate to get out and have some form of social interaction. So that, that will set people's expectations, but they will have to accept that they may not be able to enter a shopping centre or even a high street or a particular store when they want. Um, they may have to make an appointment. And once they're there, they may not be able to touch the stock as they did, feel it and experience it. And they will need to um, limit their, tra their, their trip. So they have an appointment in a store, their appointment will end, they'll have to leave. So those, those types of changes will be quite startling for a lot of people. But from where we are now, which is we're not allowed to do anything, people will, I think, accept that and respond to that. And for the stores themselves, you know, the ones that have had an online presence, a website, they've managed to survive probably most of this. Um, for some retailers, are really tough because they've got to get new stock in stores. They've got lots of unsold stock from the spring. They've now got to work out what people are going to come in for and what they might buy. Are we going to expect big sales, things like that, to get rid of some of the old stock? I mean, that's a really interesting point, actually. I mean, at Springboard, we track footfall, which is customer activity, and we've seen customer activity drop in April by 80% and over 90% in London. So, you know, you can see the depth of change that's happened. Um, so we're starting from a completely new base. And the point is that we will see some sales. Some retailers will want to get rid of that winter stock, particularly in fashion. But a lot of retailers actually stop their orders. And so we will find with some retailers there won't be as much stock as we perhaps envisage. And therefore, we won't have as many sales as we might have done. And a lot of retailers, it's not seasonal anyway. Yes, toy shops will have been selling Easter stock, but that, that won't be relevant for every retailer. So I think we'll be quite surprised at the number or the, the few number of sales we see. Diane, for now, thank you. Really good thank to you. see it. Diane Well there from Springboard. So um, there you have it. I mean, that's a sense of how shopping could look and feel very different uh, when shops reopen in England from Monday. I mean, all the usual stuff we were looking around before about the logistics they've put in place here. So you'll have to queue just to get in here. You might have to queue outside individual shops. Uh, suggestions you might want to wear a mask, also hand sanitising, all that sort of thing. And remember, coffee shops and food courts won't be open. So it will be quite a function 
functional visit, get in, get what you need, and then go home again. But nonetheless, all part of that big plan to try and get the economy moving again. And retail, of course, a huge employer and also a huge part of our economy. So the idea that it can get back to some sort of normality, really important move. Uh, more for me a little later. Ben, does it feel really eerie in there? Kind of being in a shopping mall with yeah, no there's not many of us here. So when you hear sort of footsteps, you do wonder who's coming. And look, I mean, in this job, we're often in places much earlier and before things open. But it does really feel strange seeing kind of Easter adverts in windows and all that sort of thing. Because look, these guys have been shut for ten weeks. They've got a huge job on their hands now to make sure that they can get reopened and get the right stuff in the right shops at the right time, so that we can go out and buy it. God, Easter seems so long ago now. Ben, thanks very much, doesn't it? Easter